Hello everyone, I am Shamant Gowda, CSAT faculty at Insights IAS. I welcome you once again for the question of the day series. In this video, I am going to firstly explain the answer for the previous bouncer of the day question. See, the question says an analog clock is showing 920. It is showing 920. After how much time will the clock shows its mirror time? Okay, mirror time. Now, 920 will look something like this, isn't it? Okay, when you see in the mirror, what is the time it is going to show? Rather than rotating the clock okay, and doing some hypothetical techniques to solve this question, look here now, I will show you an unique technique where you just subtract this 11, 920 by 1160, okay, subtract this 920 by 1160, it will automatically show you the answer. This is 40, this is 2. This is the mirror time which, is, which you are going to see when the time is 920. When the time is 920 in the mirror, the time shown is 240, okay, 240. But the question says, after how much time? the clock will show its mirror time. Now the time is 9.20. After how much time? It is going to be 2.40. See, it is 9.20. From 9.20, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2. Totally 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 hours. Okay. Again, there is 20 more minutes. So, which is nothing but what? 5 hours, 20 minutes. After 5 hours, 20 minutes, it is going to show its mirror time. How to find out? Okay, subtract whatever the given time from 1160, remember this one. And guys, this is today's question and this topic is votes and streams. See, firstly, I will explain the concept of votes and streams. Let us consider there is a lake, okay, means there is water in the lake there. A boat is rowing freely. And the speed of water I will consider this as W. Since it is a lake, the water is not flowing. If it is flowing, it won't become lake. That's water speed is zero. Similarly, the speed of boat, the speed of the boat in still water means the water is not flowing. Okay, if I am rowing a boat where the water is not flowing, then I will consider this as u, speed of boat in still water, not any water, it is not flowing water. In the still water, its speed is u. For example, if I consider the speed of boat is 60 kilometers per hour, freely it can move in this direction or else in this direction without facing any of the resistance because water is not flowing. Similarly, now the same boat if it has to row in a river, river always flows from up to down, right? Unidirectional movement. Now, the speed of this boat in still water is u, but in this case, in the river, the speed of the water is not equal to 0. I will consider the speed of boat u is equal to 40 kilometers per hour. Okay, 40 km per hour is the speed of the boat in the still water, in the lake. Same boat I am rowing here now. The speed of water, let us say, is equal to 60 km per hour. Okay. This is 40 km per hour and this is 60 km per hour. Now, if I ask you a question that the boat has to travel from here to here, downward. When the boat is traveling from this point to this point, downward, along with the speed of the boat, it gets the push from the water. See, water is flowing at 60 km per hour and the speed of the boat is 40 km per hour. So, if you are going at 20 km per hour, if I come and push you at 30 km per hour, your speed becomes what? 20 plus 30 which is 50 km per hour. Similarly, here also, boat is already having a speed of 40. Okay, along it, there is a push from the water which is at 60 km per hour. Hence, the boat will travel from here to here downward at a speed of Okay, this is what called downstream speed. 
downstream speed in which the speed of the boat as well as the speed of the water will get added up. In this example, it becomes 100 km per hour. Now, in the same case, the boat has to travel from this point to this point, upwards, okay, from this point to this point. Now, when the boat is traveling, trying to travel from this point to this point, it already faces the resistance from the water, which is 60 km per hour, which is greater than the force of the boat. Boat is traveling at 40, but if it is facing a resistance of 60, it cannot overcome that resistance. Hence, the boat cannot travel from this point to this point, it will be dragged out. Okay? Hence, always to travel upwards, the speed of the boat has to be greater than the speed of the water. I will change this value to 60 and 40. Now, this can travel. At what speed? 60 minus 40, which is 20 kilometers per hour. Always the force has to be greater than the resistance to move upwards. This is the speed where the boat is traveling upstream and that upstream speed is equal to what? U minus W. Very similar questions can be asked in gravity. A person is cycling, downward movement, upward movement. Down when you are going, your speed will get added up. When you are going upwards, you will struggle to go upwards, right? That is why the speed will get subtracted. Understood? This is the concept of boats and streams. Now, we will apply this one in the given question. Same question, look here, speed of boat in still water is 9 kilometers per hour. Speed of the boat in still water means what is given here? Look here, speed of boat in still water is called what? U. This is U. And the speed of stream, okay, speed of stream means this is W, speed of the water. Boat can travel at 9 kilometers per hour in the still water. If the water is not moving, it can travel at 9 kilometers per hour. And the water in the river is flowing at 5 km per hour. Now, if I leave this boat in the water, it will travel downstream with U plus W. That is 9 plus 5, 14 km per hour. Similarly, while going up, it will travel at 9 minus 5, which is 4 km per hour. Okay? See, look here. U plus W is the downward speed. U plus W, which is nothing but what? U is 9, W is 5. So, 14 km per hour. Similarly, while going up, it will struggle to travel, hence its speed becomes 9 minus 5, which is 4 kilometers per hour. See, if the total time taken to travel by the boat to go to a certain point and come back is 18 hours, see, it is traveling from this point to this point and coming back, okay, and coming back. The total time taken is how much here? 18 hours. The total time taken is 18 hours. If this is 18 hours going and coming back, is it 9 hours? Definitely not. Okay. Since it takes more time to travel upstream than downstream, its 18 hours is not half and half time. Okay. Going time and coming back time, it is not same, okay, unlike the road. In this case, it is a stream. Hence, to go up, it takes more time than to come downstream. The total time taken is 18 hours. So, I can put the relationship in this way. The time to go up plus time to come down is equal to 18 hours. See? And we know that time is equal to what? Distance by speed. Distance by speed. From here to here, distance d. From here to here, also the distance d. So, time to go up, time is equal to distance by speed. While going up, what is the speed it is traveling at? u minus w plus d, same distance coming down. What is the speed at which when it is coming down? Speed will get added up, u plus w and the total time taken is 18 hours. Okay, d, I have to find out, d divided by u plus w, u minus w is 4 plus d by 14 which is nothing but 18. See, 14 into d, 14 d, 4 d, that is 18 d. This 18 d is equal to 4 into 14 into 18. Okay, 4 into 14 into 18, 18, 18 get cancelled. So, what is the answer here? 56 kilometers. Okay. So, the length of the river is how much? 56 kilometers. And guys, this is the bouncer of today. Try to solve this question. And the question says, see, if SI is added to the sum after 10 years, even though you are getting SI every year, you are not going to add every year, but you are adding after every 10 years. If you keep on doing like this, 
1000 has to become 2000 at 5% per annum what is the total time taken these are your options try to answer this question and put the answer in the comment section guys thank you we'll see you in the next video